follow our own heart's goals, pursuits, and desires and find them satisfied, but we have not obeyed the Father's commands, what have we accomplished? Hi, this is Barry Phillips of 10 Minute Torah, day number two, the Torah portion, Pikude. Let's go back and read again a verse that we read yesterday in Exodus or Shemot chapter number 38, and verse number 22. And Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Yehuda, made all that Yahweh had commanded Moshe. Bezalel, as we understand him, from what we read about him, seems to be an artisan. He is especially gifted and enabled by the rule of Kodesh in the arena of engraving, weaving, uh, forming, shaping, building, uh, taking a grand design that was verbally related to him, catching the vision of it, and bringing it into reality. As an artisan, an artist, there is a great yearning to use artistic expression. If you go into a museum and you begin to view the various errors of paintings, whether it's the Renaissance or modern art or something in between, you'll find that there's a lot of different interpretive designs, ways of looking at things, color manipulations, etc., where the artist sees things, but in his mind, it appears as a different picture, and he begins to put it on canvas in a way that maybe we wouldn't have done it, but we appreciate how he does it. Um, a dear friend of ours, Dr. Sukina of Indigenous Messengers International, is a fabulous artist. He is Native American uh, of the Inuit people from Alaska, and his color selections and the types of uh, designs that he used to portray, whether it's uh, native peoples or animals or scenes, it's just an amazing, amazing work that he does, how he sees things and then interprets them on the canvas. With Bezalel, Jan did not ask or even give room for permission to his artistic expression. But rather, Yah says, this is what I want. And he gives very precise measurements. I want the Ark of the Covenant by these dimensions. I want it designed in such fashion that it appears this one particular way. The carabine that are on the top, they have to be facing toward one another. The wings have to touch. There has to be a certain design. He got it right. Now, we don't know if he made many efforts before he got things right or if every effort was right the very first time or not. I don't know. We're not told. But the end result of everything is that it was exactly so, exactly what Yah has asked for. Getting the pattern right is extremely important. Um. I, I was in prayer once many years ago when House of David first got started. And I was told six months before we started, maybe a little less, when you come out, do not recreate what you come out of. At that time, I was still pastoring a church. So I had an understanding, I'm coming out of this church, I'm coming out of church dumb, if you will, don't recreate church when I come out. And so if the church system did it, I decided I wouldn't do it. No membership list, no passing of the plate, no committees, no people with titles and tags and so on. I tried to, I tried to differentiate ourselves from whatever was church culture or church practice as much as possible. After a while, a good number of months, maybe in a couple of years, in frustration, 
For all of my difference and effort here, I'm not getting anywhere. Father, I asked one day, what did you mean by not recreating what I came out of? And the answer kind of shook me. Purity of heart. I thought, Father, you wanted me to change mechanics. And to his reply to me was, Son, I can bless mechanics if they're done with a pure heart. Another day or so, I'm riding in the car down a, a parkway and asking the question, so what is your pattern? What are your mechanics, Father? Again, the answer was simple and yet overwhelming. Son, my pattern is the tabernacle. Even now, it shakes me up a bit to think how easy we miss it. That his pattern is entering to his gates with praise and thanksgiving and honoring the work of Yeshua in our behalf, washing and cleansing, sanctifying ourselves, consecration and setting ourselves apart, standing in the illumination of the menorah as the Ruach of Kodesh, uh, it illuminates our faces so that we can see properly the word that feeds us and sustains us. And having been led in the Ruach, this Holy Spirit, and being filled with the word, now we understand how to intercede and we come and we offer our prayers and our petitions requests before him. Honoring him for his mercy, for his covenant, and being overwhelmed with who he is. What a marvelous pattern. But even in the pattern, there are permissions. Now, there were extreme protocols that had to be adhered to in the priestly service, and I understand that. I'm not taking away from that. We will also see the heavenly scene in the book of Revelation where uncountable messenger beings are lifting their voice, and they're singing certain songs. We see in Yochanan's vision how that there are elders that get up from their thrones, they take the crowns off of their heads, and they lay them, cast them before the feet of him who was on the throne. There is the protocol of looking for one who is worthy to open the seals of the scroll in the hand of he who is on the throne. And they search until they find the Lion of the tribe of, of Yehuda, who appears as a lamb that has been slain. We see that there are bowls of prayers that are poured out. We see that there are martyrs under the throne of Yah who are crying out how long until the vengeance is given. In the book of Isaiah, we see that there are seraphim, these incredible beings that are about the throne of Yah, who are crying out nonstop that Yah is kadosh, he is holy, is set apart. There is worship and adoration of the Most High. It is a sense of protocol, but it is from the inward of the being. In the way that I was raised, Everything was to be led by the Spirit. And if it was liturgical, if it was form and fashion, then we were, we were ruling out the Holy Spirit. But it's a balance of both. We need some liturgy. We need to read some prayers. We need to understand some things that are written by wise people to help us grasp the majesty of who he is. Some of the old hymns, some of the very old hymns speak of his splendor in terms that we fail to grasp any longer. Um, we, we need to be led by the Spirit and allow the gifts to move in the midst of us. We also need to dance. We need to sing our songs to him and make melody in our hearts. We need to have time of quietness where we think on him and become overwhelmed with the idea of who he really is to us. All of these things are worship, loving your family, providing for them, caring for others, showing compassion. These are acts of worship, and they fit in the protocol of the tabernacle system. 
give him his worship today. Adore him. Magnify him. And we'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, shalom. Shalom.